good day everybody it's Jameson and um, you know the holidays are approaching so I'm starting to work on things for my uh, upcoming show in December uh, or online sales I suppose either one and I uh, thought I would share with you how I slump on this uh, texture tile mold so this is not rocket science but I will say that um, sometimes these molds can be very finicky and a lot of it's going to depend on the type of glass that you're using and what kiln you're using and you have to know your kiln and so um, please 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 as i share my firing schedule you know perhaps use it as a suggestion but it's only a suggestion because i fine tune this to work in my kiln it may not work for you but this is a nativity platter um, or a, a tile uh, it measures 11 by 11. I got it from Slumpies. I'll drop a, a link to this mold. And um, what a lot of people do on these types of texture molds, uh, which I think is smart, is to full fuse your blank first, then in a separate firing, um, slump it over or drape it into, slump over, I don't know, <laughs> onto your textured tile. Um, and then I want to turn it into a platter, so ultimately that would be a third firing for me which is certainly okay, and that's the conservative approach. Uh, but I found a schedule that allows me to full fuse right onto this, uh, you know, two layers of glass right onto this tile. And so that's what I choose to do because then I can skip a, an extra firing. I can full fuse directly on the tile and then go into, um, into my slump and get something accomplished in just, in just two fuses. So here's my mold. I've sprayed it well with zip. Uh, I've used this one a couple times before. The zip is getting a little thin in a few areas, so I might uh, give it one quick hit again. Uh, but let me uh, cut the glass and then show you my layup. Okay, so here's my glass. Um, I don't know the bullseye number. I'm pretty sure this is uh, amber glass with a gold irid to it, so you can kind of see that iridescent um, shimmer there. I'm gonna put that irid side down on my tile. So I'm gonna get this cleaned up really well. Um, I'm just gonna call it out. There's, you can probably see it down here, this texture. There's some texture in this irid coating. I'm a little worried about how that might fire. I mean, this will be face down against the tile. So hopefully it'll be fine. Hopefully it comes out looking decent. Maybe that'll smooth out a little bit. I mean, it's, it's like bubbles in the glass. I don't really think it's the irid coating. I think it's the glass, but in any event, I wasn't there to pick this piece out. This came mail order, and so I get what I get, I guess. Um, so we'll see what happens uh, on the mold with that. So I'm gonna clean this up really well. Since I'm firing irid side down, I will flip it over. I will don my mask. You can see part of it right here. I will put that on and I will dust this with clear powder, put it straight down onto my mold, and then I will cap it with a, sh a, sh bleh, <laughs> a sheet of clear Tecta and, uh, and fire it. I'll share my firing schedule again, which is just a suggestion that seems to work for me, but I will share that in the video description. Okay, it seems to be my brand on YouTube that things don't go as I planned, and then uh, something goes wrong and I kind of explain what went wrong, and this is gonna be another one of those videos. So in the end, I'm not sure you're gonna end up learning too much from this one because my firing schedule that I intended went up to, I believe, 1440 uh, for a 10 minute hold. I came out to the garage to get something out of the fridge and my kiln was beeping with a failure to heat uh, error message and the kiln was at 1385. Now it was still going up, but uh, failure to heat just meant that it wasn't heating as fast as uh, my schedule was calling for. And so I uh, looked inside and I have uh, a Gen Ken uh, uh, fiber kiln and eight of the, there were eight elements inside it and four of them were dark, which um, was a, a warning to me that perhaps one of my relays went out. It has two relays. So the kiln was still heating. Those four elements were just working super hard. Um, and I went, and what I think too was that because um, it wasn't ramping up as fast as I wanted, it was kind of soaking um, a little longer. So I think the glass got a fair amount of heat work, just not at the top temperature that I had dictated. So, <laughs> so I went ahead and killed the program uh, and skipped to my next step. Because four of the elements were still working, I was able to go ahead and anneal this piece um, and the whole load that I had in. Um, so it wasn't a total loss. 
And then I was surprised when I opened the kiln to see that um, it really had, for the most part, fully fused. Um, so again, even though I didn't hit my top temp, uh, even at 1385, I think that it was taking its sweet time and so the glass got plenty of heat work. So this is not a schedule I would repeat. Um, therefore, I'm not sure that you're gonna learn a ton from this video, but I thought I'm just gonna keep moving on and show you what I what I got out of it. So uh, the other mistake that I made um, was, I guess it wasn't perfectly centered. And so the glass started to, to fall off on this end but it's not a tragic um, uh, result. So uh, this is the side with the irid. I'm very pleased with the impression. Uh, I did have some bubbles in here, but I, I kind of come to expect that with this mold because it, it seems to trap air in a couple of spots, but the bubbles aren't at the surface and, and they work just fine, so I'm not worried about it. So this gold irid is, is really beautiful, I think, in this piece. Um, this is where the glass started to come off the edge just a little bit. So I don't know if you can tell, there's a little bit of a lip that formed. Now, I could aggressively cold work this, kind of refire it to clean it up again. Um, it, it's not that bad to me. It doesn't bother me that much. Um, so frankly, I'm just going to move forward and slump this. So uh, great, great impression here. Uh, not too many bubbles, a nice full fuse, even at, you know, quote, 1385. So I'm not going to cold work this and go back into the kiln. I'm just going to slump it now and move forward. So I'll show you what that looks like in just a little bit. Okay, I just couldn't leave well enough alone. And <laughs> I wanted to prove to you that the schedule works. So I did not want to leave you hanging as the viewer. So I cut some more glass, put it on here, and I ran the full schedule. I've replaced the relay on my kiln. Uh, everything is good to go now. And so I ran my actual schedule that I'll post in the video uh, description and just wanted to show you uh, that yes, my schedule still works. So uh, this was taken up to the full fuse of 1440, had some nice bubble squeeze. I, I didn't have enough of that amber glass with the gold irid. This is actually clear with a gold irid. And uh, I think you can see that on there. It's still a really cool effect. So uh, just to prove to myself and to my viewers that my schedule works, I did run my schedule and here's the piece that I got. So now I'm going to slump both of them. Okay, so here's the finished piece. This is the amber with the gold irid. I'm most pleased with this one. I think that look is, is really cool. I'll be picking up some more of that glass soon. Here is the uh, clear piece with the gold irid. It's much more subtle, but still a very nice effect. That irid just really makes these pieces shine. Nice piece for the holidays. And I did do one more piece in white. This was white tecta on the bottom. Clear tecta on the top gives it some depth and uh, it turned out quite well as well. So thanks for visiting. Hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe, comment, and share, and uh, check out the video notes for the schedule. Thanks.